Hi, I'm Marilyn Ellie. Uh, I've been an activist working with Indian Point uh, closing and now with the decommissioning for a long time. And uh, for information about that, you can go to the IPSC website, which is ipsicinfo.org. Uh, and what I'm talking about today is tritium. You may have heard about this because it's been in the news a lot. Tritium is a radioactive isotope that is in um, the water at the fuel pools at Indian Point. It got there because uh, the fuel rods that powered the plant are um, stored there because they're so highly radioactive. Well, those fuel rods are coming out now. And so the question is, what do you do with a million gallons of tritiated water that also contains other radioactive isotopes? Now, what's happened in the past is that they've just been dumped into the Hudson River. The NRC saw nothing wrong with that. The plant had to do it to continue to operate. Uh, it's what's always been done for 40 years. So why the problem now? Well, the problem now is that things are different. We no longer use the Hudson River as a sewer. It's our heritage river. And why would we want to dump anything in it, including radioactive waste? Because that's what it is from the, from the fuel pool. And it would be quick and easy and um, really help Holtec's um, profit line, uh, help their bottom line. Holtec owns the place and they want to get in and get out and get their money and say sayonara. But what's it going to do to the river and what's it going to do to the people who are using the river? The kids that play on the shore, the boaters, the swimmers, people sometimes, even though you're not supposed to, there are people who do eat fish from the river. So why do we need to, to expose them to something like this? And things have changed. We have a new paradigm, a new way of looking at things now. It's no longer just what the NRC regulations from the 70s say. They didn't look at the effects on human bodies. What they looked at was what they had, what they knew, and different levels of exposure outside, not how they affected you inside, but how they, um, you know, what the, the, the measurements were. That's what they could measure. That's what they did measure, and nobody has looked at it from 1970. Well, we can do better now. We have a lot more information, and we now know that this low-level radioactive isotope, tritium, uh, can be ingested from the water. It can be ingested from the air, and once it's inside of you, it acts like this tiny little time bomb that goes off. It just keeps emitting its beta ray, ray, rays, and what it does is it disrupts cell function. That's not good. Uh, is something going to happen right after you ingest it? Is something going to happen two days later? Probably not, but there does come a limit to what the body can repair, and why would you want to take a chance of getting something like that in you anyway? And oh, by the way, there are seven communities up up from Indian Point that get their drinking water from the Hudson. And the Hudson is tidal, which means the water, it's a river that flows both ways. So why do you want to expose people to that? What's the reason for it? And again, we come back to profit motive and bottom line. So. Uh, weighing these two things, what do you think? What do you think should be done? Um, there's no hard evidence about tritium or these other um, so-called harmless um, radioisotopes, and that's because the research has always been underfunded and fragmented, and it's never been all pulled together. There's a, a great Scientific American um, article, very comprehensive. It's a long read and well worth it. It's from 2014, but let me tell you, nothing about tritium has changed since since 2014. So uh, you'll see the you'll see the link to that. So when somebody says, "Show me the hard facts. Show me it's going to hurt somebody," my response is, you know, we have this precautionary principle. And if there is anything that might do damage, why would we want to do it? Let's do something else. The precautionary principle 
Above all, do no harm. Environmental scientists play a key role in society's responses to environmental problems, and many of the studies they perform are intended ultimately to affect policy. The precautionary principle proposed as a new guideline in environmental decision-making has four central components. Taking preventative action in the face of uncertainty, shifting the burden of proof to the proponents of an activity, exploring a wide range of alternatives to possibly harmful decisions, and increasing public participation in decision-making. No longer uh, just dumping into the Hudson. It's just not acceptable. I don't care if it's chocolate pudding. <laughs> I don't want a million gallons of anything dumped into the Hudson River. The river doesn't need it. We don't need it. And we need to take care of the river. So Holtec would like to, uh, they're getting all this, the fuel rods out now. If you, if you didn't know, there's a whole bunch of them, big concrete casts sitting on concrete pads on the property, and they want to get the last ones out by August of this year. Once they've done that, their goal is to get rid of that water and dismantle the fuel pool and move on, <laughs> finish up with all of the deconstruction and, um, you know, Finish up and get the hell out of there so they can collect their, their paycheck. So I think we need to consider more than just hard facts here. We also need to consider what's good for people, what's good for the river, and how things have changed. The NRC regulations from 1970 are simply not acceptable. There are some great forums with experts talking about this. Helen Caldicott is one. Mary Olson is another, um, and the it's at uh, grassroots, www.grassroots.org, Indian Point Forums, and they really are excellent. So if you want to hear experts talking, and if you want more information about it, this is a really good place to, to go. I, I'm not an expert on any of this, and I learned a lot from the forums. It really did reinforce my initial thinking that I don't want to dump stuff into the river, but these experts are talking about reasons why. So what's the politics of this whole thing? Right now, uh, a lot of people are unhappy about the idea. Uh, there's a resolution that some municipalities are starting to pass. The county, I think just last night actually, passed a, a resolution uh, saying that they, they did not want dumping in the Hudson River from this tritiated water. And um, so the, the, the county, the town of Portland, I believe Hastings may be getting ready to pass a resolution. There are some places in Rockland. So everybody is looking at this and saying, we don't want it, don't do it. Is that going to be enough to stop it? Well, let me tell you something. This is all unknown territory. Uh, it's not happened before. They, Holtec is saying that they have the right to do it and they're going to go ahead and do it. How can they be stopped? Well, does there have to be an injunction? Does there have to be a court case? This is all to be considered. And I want to mention the decommissioning oversight board here too. They've been um, supervising Holtec and the decommissioning process. They meet every other month. And uh, all of the slides that they've talked about with different presenters and all of the information that they've collected is available on, on their website. They're really easy to find. All you have to do is look up Decommissioning Oversight Board and you're right there. Theoretically, they have um, a list where you can sign up and they will tell you when the meetings are coming up. If you want to keep in touch, that's one way to do. But I, for me, I think this is a real test for the DOB. What powers do they have with all these different agencies that are uh, part of the board? What can they do to uh, stop this dumping? Are they going to? Or are they just going to hold their nose and say, well, it's not scientifically proven, and they're within the regs? So that's the ongoing debate. That's the politics of it. And I think it's going to take more than just local people, local um, communities. I think that people are going to have to write and talk to their elected officials. Um, encourage your town to pass this resolution, because the more resolutions that are passed, the stronger our case is for people not wanting this done. And um, it motivates your elected officials when they when they see these kinds of things. And if your municipality can pass the resolution, that would be great. Who else is going to be involved? Well, the governor of the state. 
she's going to have something to do about it. We don't know quite what yet, but the more people speak up about it, the, the more people are involved in this, the more likely it is that she's going to look at this carefully and maybe do something on the state level. We can, we can only hope. Um, some people say, well, what are the other solutions uh, besides dumping it in the, in, in the river? And of course, of course, Holtec gets mad every time we say dumping. They want to say discharge. They want to say release. It's dumping. It's dumping a toxic, toxic substance into the, into the river. So what else can we do with it? Well, it can be trucked away, and I think that's a terrible solution. It's our mess. Why would we want to contaminate another community? Plus, all of the trucks and, 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 and everything else that would have to be used to get it to wherever it's going. And it, it, like I say, it's our mess. We need to take care of it. It was produced there and it needs to remain there. It can't be evaporated. That's been tried. Um, didn't work. It was a mess. Um, it, it, there's a, a, a rumor going around that it might be able to be solidified, but that's an experimental thing and not set up for a million gallons. So what's left? Storage on site. And that's two options, either keeping it in the spent fuel pools, uh, and that, that's a very expensive proposition, um, and you have to keep the pools operating, and there's an evaporation problem, or putting it in tanks on site. I think that's the simplest uh, way. It's not cheap to do tanks on site either, but the Japanese have been doing this with tritiated water for a long time. So there, <laughs> there are things to look at to see how to do it well. And do these tanks eventually leak? Well, probably. So you have to put an underground uh, covering there underneath it to, in case they leak. You have to let them sit there. The half-life of tritium is 12 years which means after 12 years, you have um, half, of, half of the amount. Uh, the easiest thing to do is to say it would all be gone and disintegrated uh, in 75 years. And we know that those spent fuel rods are going to be there a lot longer than that. They have no place to go. So my contention and my question is, why not let some tritiated, some tanks of tritiated water sit there as well? What's what's the harm except to the bottom line of the company? Um, you know, how much is it going to cost? How many tanks are needed? Who's going to pay for it? Who's going to supervise it? That really is a problem uh, for, I think, the DOB and also for uh, Holtec. And I, I can only hope that with enough grassroots activism and pressure and talk that we can get our elected officials to come to that very conclusion. So um, that's the story on tritium. And uh, there is lots written about it. You can look it up and you can see a lot of the subjects. You can also go to IPSIC, www.ipsicinfo.org. While we are still working on that page, but it's not complete yet, but you will find some information about decommissioning, about the resolution, and um, everything else. So I thank you for your attention. I appreciate you being here. I could list, yes, let me just name a couple other, I, I just want to name a couple other experts that you can look up and we will have links to. Gordon Edwards talks about what tritium does uh, once it's inside your body. He's a, um, he's a scientist and he's in Canada, but tritium is the same no matter where. Uh, Ed Lyman. Uh, is with the Union of Concerned Science, and he um, his conclusion in a magazine article that we will link to says that um, what's the harm in letting it sit there? We don't know about a lot of these other medical things that are coming out, so leave it there until we get more information. I think that's really, um, really key. And one of the most important one of the most important things are the two forums that have already been done. Uh, on the public health implications of tritium and these kinds of releases. So for that, you go to grassroots, www.grassroots.org, Indian Point slash forums. So if you don't do anything else, take a look at those videos. Um, and if you want more information, easy to find. And you can always reach me at 
um, <laughs> not a Twitter account. Sorry about that. But my email is elliewestcad at gmail.com. E L I E Westcan, W E S T C A N, at gmail.com. Thank you for sticking with me this long and thank you for being interested in this. And I, I hope you raise your voice and make yourself heard. Thank you.